She wants to know what was your inspiration to create the Dothraki. Well, the Dothraki, I, I take many things from history. So the Dothraki were a combination of uh, a number of influences from the, uh, the horse tribes of the Eurasian steppes. Certainly there's a lot of the Mongols in them, but they're not purely the Mongols. I, I added, there's also material about the Huns. There's some, some material there that I took from Amerindian tribes, such as the, uh, the Sioux and the Cheyenne, the horse tribes of the great American prairies. And there's um, a certain amount that's pure fantasy, uh, you know, where you have a little fun, you, you mix all this stuff together, you come up with your thing, and then you add a few fantasy twists on it, because this is, after all, a fantasy series. So. Okay. If your wife asked you to bring back to life one of your characters, your wife, would you do it? Any clues of who may that be? Well, I don't know if I'd bring anyone back. I know she, she, she does have a favorite character, and she has threatened to leave me if I kill that character. <laughs> so, so I do have to be very careful about that, but I'm not, <laughs> not going to tell you what character that is. You have to find out from character. Okay. So, um, Belen, Vasquez, Belen Velasquez, I'm sorry. When you first started writing A Song of Ice and Fire 20 years ago, what kind of audience were you addressing? Today, who are you writing for? I'm writing for me. The, the fact that you guys like the story <laughs> is, is great, and I'm, I'm very, very pleased by that. But I think ultimately you have to write for yourself. You, you can't try to please other people. You write the truth as, as you do it. You write the kind of stories that you want to read. Um, you know, books like A Song of Ice and Fire were the kind of books I craved when I opened the fantasy book. Um, so you, you write to please yourself. You follow your own, your own muse, uh, your own vision of, of what truth is and what literature is and what a good story is and uh, and then you hope that uh, when you send it out into the world that there are some other people who will like it too and fortunately in my case there, there seem to be great right. so uh, Sabrina Torres would like to know when did you first write your first book when did I first write my first book yes Oh, God, I was probably about nine years old. Uh, yes, that I, would, was that I wouldn't call it a book. It was a, like a werewolf story that I wrote, wrote out longhand, and I sold it to other kids in the project for a nickel. Uh, <laughs> and I had to read it to them, too. But, uh, you know, it was a good way to make a nickel. <laughs> Until one of your little friend's mother came to your mother, right? Yes, uh, that career was... It was, my stories were giving the kid nightmares, so his mother complained to my mother and she <laughs> stopped me writing those monster stories. Okay. And um, Salvador Romero, as a reader, what characters have captivated you the most? You know, I, I like all my characters. You know, it's like asking a, a mother, who's your favorite child? Uh, <laughs> You have to love them all. I even love the bad guys. I mean, people like, like Theon, who is, you know, um, the hound. Um, even that little shit Joffrey. Uh, <laughs> you know, they, they, uh, you write about them long enough, and you try to understand them and what motivates them and put them through their things, and you, you can't help develop a certain affection for them. Um. Which, uh, Lorena Aguilar, which are the biggest challenges you have faced throughout your writing career? You know, the, the biggest challenges I have faced in, in my career, well, there's, there's, there's really two challenges. Um, one is the endless challenge of, of trying to do the work as well as you can. 
you know, you, you, you write and you look at the work the next day and it's so brilliant in your head and then you look at what's on the paper and it's not brilliant enough and you, you know, you're disappointed, you struggle with it more. It, it's always, how do you find the right words? How do you get the, the scenes and the characters and the things in your head down on paper? And that's the writer's endless task. And I don't think it can ever be accomplished. I mean, when I reread my old work, sometimes I'm pleased with it, but a lot of times I kind of wince, say, oh, I could have done that better. And my old work, yes, the things I wrote 30 years ago, but also sometimes the thing I wrote last Tuesday, um, that's one challenge. The challenge of, of doing your art as well as you can do it. The other challenge is a, is a much more practical one that also a lot of writers face, and it's the endless, um, the endless struggle between art and commerce. I mean, like everybody else, I've, I've, uh, I've got bills to pay. You know, I'm obviously doing very well now. That hasn't always been true in my life. Uh, my career has crashed and burned at least twice where I thought I was done as a writer, that I couldn't sell anymore. Um, I was looking at other careers. Uh, how do I pay my mortgage? At one point, I almost lost my house because there was no money coming in. You know, I, I teach writing sometimes at things, and people approach me at, at events like this and say that they want to be writers. And what I always tell them is, you know, if, if you if you have to write, write. If the stories are in you, get it down. But you have to realize that you're entering a profession where there is no security. You have to be a bit of a gambler if you want to be a writer. You can roll the dice and, and you can you know, win the lottery like uh, I have or a few other people have. Most people don't. Most people crap out or they win for a while and then they lose. It's a, it's, it's a profession, it's a career, it's a life that has highs and also has lows, also has you know, moments where you wonder whether anyone will ever appreciate the things you're doing and uh, you know that can be that can be difficult, and it's not for everybody. You, you really do have to be a bit of a gambler to uh, embark on a writer. And I've dealt with that for you know certain certain parts of my life, definitely, and it shaped me.